Okay, so we're going to finish the skirt. We just need to do the blind hem. And before we take the skirt to the blind hemming machine, we need to make sure that we've got our hem pressed up so that we don't have to do two things at once. So all we're doing here is turning, turning it up and just checking with your tape measure that it's a consistent three centimeters. Three centimeters on this one, generally the bigger, this, this hem of three centimeters on a skirt, it's probably the smallest I would go. Um, generally I'd do at least a four centimeter one. Um, it just, it, it tends to be a bit more, a bit fancier and a bit more luxurious if you've got a, if you've got a wider hem. Um, usually with uh, with narrower hems it's it looks like you're just being a bit scabby and you're just trying to save fabric um. so just check as you go along And you'll get to the point where you can just join up the two edges and then you don't have to measure. Okay, so our hem is folded up ready for the blind Okay, hem. so now we've got the skirt here. This is the blind hammer machine. Um, you probably won't use it a lot, but it does come in pretty handy. Uh, it has the, the length, actually this, no, that's not the length. What this dial is, is the amount that it actually, because this is the needle, the needle's curved and it, it dips down into the fabric and just grips onto it. So what this does is give you more or less depth into that motion. Um, it also has a little function here, a stitch selector of skip and non-skip. So that means skip means uh, like every sec, it, it skips every second stitch. Um, and uh, I can't really remember why what that's for but anyway that's what that thing does um, all right so what we need to do we've got our knee pad here and you can see when I push the knee pad th that all of that down you know goes down underneath and you have this here as a guide so what you do is you sit it in here and then you put that guide at the top edge of your of your overlocking here okay and then and then what happens in the middle there is that there's a little thing that pushes up so it pushes the fabric at a peak so that the needle can go through the fabric so this machine does tend to gallop along a little bit um, it can be a bit a bit confronting but you just go slow and and again like it's important that you don't you know like you don't pull on the fabric if you put your foot down it's going to go really fast and then you tend to pull back on the fabric here which will just create a mess so all you're doing is going very slowly and you're guiding the fabric um, into the machine making sure that this guide here sits along the top edge of the of your overlocking and you can see that i've got the skirt inside out as well so you're not having to deal with any fabric, excess fabric getting in the way. And at the end, do a bit of a crossover. So I've come, this is where I started, it's where I ended, so I've come over about four centimeters here. So what I need to do now that I've, now that I've finished, I'm going to, uh, which way does it go? So oh yes, so up. <laughs> so that's the way you turn it. So, and just lift the, lift the foot all the way up and then just try and get in there and hold on to the, um, hold on to the thread and then pull that out. And what happens now, and this is probably a bit tricky to see, but when you, when you pull on this, it actually undoes loops. So it's, it's a chain stitch. So what we need to do is secure the end of our chain stitch here. So you'll see if I pull on this, there's, an, there's a loop there, which is the next loop. So if I pull on that, it's just going to come out and it's just gonna go further back and back again. So what I'm gonna to do to stop that happening, I'm going to put the end of my thread through the loop and then just give that a little tighten here, just to seal off the end so it doesn't, it doesn't unravel 
and then I'm going to snip it just with like a bit of a centimeter, one and a half centimeter tail there. Okay. And you can see on the outside, again, we've got black overlocking and black thread here, but you can see how it's just caught every, um, you know, it's caught through the fabric. And if that was in a matching um, yarn, you wouldn't see those threads. Yeah, we've got a clear, um, a clear thread that we use on this machine that, that you could have used, but we actually wanted to show you what happens. So we've done it in black. And with that skip stitch, that skip selection fun function, what it would do is it would only do every second Do every stitch. second one. Yeah. So it would be about uh, two centimetres apart. Yeah. Um, and just think about it too, because like if you were probably if you were doing this calico in an actual style, I think potentially you'd probably be better off having a machine stitched hem. Mm. But we just wanted just to show you this machine. So always work with you know with your fabrics. If you've got a lot of um, like wool fabrics, work really well with the blind hammer because you can get a really like you can get it in nice and deep, and it's very secure and, and it it's invisible. invisible. Yeah. 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 Um, so on this one you can see it, but generally you wouldn't. 